Welcome back to the show, my friend. Oh, thank you for having me again. Good to see you. The last time I saw you was in South Africa. Yes, Johannesburg. Was that your first time out there? That was my first time in South Africa. The first time on that continent, period. Are you serious? Absolutely. Did you kiss the ground and be like, I'm home? Um, no, but I, I, I felt that way. You yeah. Know, I felt the connection, you know what I mean? I felt like uh, I, was in, I was in the right body. You know, so to speak. you know what's interesting is I took that for granted until I lived in the U.S. for like three years, and then when I went home now, I was like, uh -huh. oh, now I, f I see what that feeling is. Because black Americans used to tell me that when they'd come to South Africa, and I'd be like, really? Nah, I felt it. But no, you, you, there is a special feeling. Like, you, you, you had that as well? Yeah, and I think, it, I think it's two ways to feel, because um, my wife was telling me how she kind of felt like a disconnect only because it's a, it's a whole bunch of people that look like us, but they know their culture, they're speaking a different language. Wow. And she felt like she, she had been robbed, and I was like, baby, you were. <laughs> okay, we, we all were, right, you know? Right. So it's, 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 it's a dual feeling. Some people feel disconnected, and then some of us feel like we're at home. But the beauty of it is you can always learn, right? You, you can, can learn what tribe you're from, you can learn your culture, you can learn your original language. You can, man. Yeah. And you, you, you're someone who's on a journey of learning right now. You yes. Know? Charlemagne is somebody many people may know as, you know, a face of hip-hop, a face of, you know, like, entertainment and what's happening in the world. But I feel like over the past few years, you've been on a journey of, like, evolving yourself as a human being. And that's what this book feels like. Shook One, Anxiety Playing Tricks on Me. This is a book about mental health. Yes, and it didn't... Uh, I didn't intend for it to be a book about mental health. Like, you know, I was literally just keeping a journal of all my therapy sessions. So I was keeping a journal of things that, you know, give me anxiety now, things that have right. historically given me anxiety. And then, you know, when you're sitting in therapy, you just start unpacking all kind of stuff. So it just became the pages in this book. But sitting in therapy is not something that many black men would, A, admit to, and B, want to be involved in. That's, 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 that's a movement that you've really been, you know, at the forefront of. There's many, there's many black yes. men who've said in America, yo, I go to therapy now because of Charlemagne. Because Absolutely. you're in a community where for a long time it was like, yo, you do what? You go to therapy? And that's why I always say, you know, sometimes God allows things to happen to you so he can work through you. And that's why I think it's very important for us to always share our experiences. Right. Because they can help the next person. Like, for example, you know, my father, which I just found out over Thanksgiving, my father had been going to therapy two and three times a week. He tried to kill himself 30 years ago. Wow. He uh, has been on 10 to 12 different medications. For his, and his, you his never, depression, you never knew this. Never knew it, but he read my book, and that's when he decided to come have the conversation with me about it. So if he'd have told me about this years ago, then I would have known that it was tools and resources right, out there right, that right. could have helped me combat what I've been dealing with my whole life. Do you think that fundamentally hip hop and its culture goes against ideas of like getting help and therapy and like the, like? Do you think there's a part of the culture itself that that doesn't? you know, speak to that, or, you know, you know, it's, like, frowned upon in a way? Um, that's a, that's a good question. I think that we lean on the wrong things. Like, it's a lot of self-medication. That's where the weed and the pills and the alcohol right. are involved. Or a lot of times, just as a black person, we, po we think that, like, pain is normal. You know, like, growing up in America, you think that a lot of things that we go through, the trauma, the pain, right, like, right, we're right. supposed to be going through that. But then when you kind of, like, transcend those circumstances and you're on the outside looking in, you're like, eh, a lot of things that we used to normalize or a lot of things that we used to go through aren't, aren't exactly right. normal. It's yeah. interesting in the, in the book, like, you, you've broken it down into different chapters that, that, that tackle specific issues, you know? Um, things like forget the FOMO, uh, being black annoyed is a reality, therapy yes. is not embarrassing, getting help is your right, be confident in your own skin. And I was struck by a few things. I've always known Charlemagne is like one of the most confident people out there. Mm -hmm. You say things that have half of the internet coming after you. <laughs> like, I, every time I see you say something, I'm just like, That don't wow. mean I'm confident, I could just be stupid. Yeah, you I know? mean, <laughs> but stupidly confident sometimes yeah, is what I feel. True. You'll say things and I've literally, I've seen half the internet come after you. But in the book, you talk about how much anxiety that has created in your life. I never thought that that was an issue that you face. And a lot of people get anxiety from the internet. Have you found tools that help people overcome that? I mean, you talk about it in the book, but what, what have you really found that, that works? Well, uh, therapy, number one, you know, and uh, number two, honestly, just um, thinking a little bit more before you tweet things out. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> some, things, some things can be avoided if you just ask your circle first of right. all. Like, I think our first instinct, sometimes we don't understand something, is just to run to the internet with it. Let me ask a couple of people that I trust, first of all, right. you know, what they think about this, and then I'll give my uh, opinion on it, on it later. It's interesting because you are a, uh, a friend and someone who has interviewed Kanye West, right? Yes. And what's been interesting this year is the journey that Kanye West has been on. We saw Kanye West come out and, you know, some people said he had stopped medication to start making music again. Yes, he, he said was, that. He was in the studio, right? And then 
And then we started seeing Kanye the MAGA hat wearer. Kanye, like, you know, coming out and saying things about the world, you know. <clears throat> and, and, and everyone was like, oh, man, he's crazy, and we made the jokes. And then Kanye came out and said, no, 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 I have mental health issues. Yeah. And then everyone was like, oh, we, we can't make the jokes. Then he sat down with President Trump, and he was like, oh, I was misdiagnosed. I was misdiagnosed. I'm, I'm, I don't have bipolar. I don't have bipolar. Sleep deprivation. I don't yeah. have it. It's just sleep deprivation. Yeah. And it's like, wait, so we can make the jokes? And then the other day on Twitter, I saw, like, Ariana Grande went and said something, and then he's like, I have mental health issues. Yeah. But, like, there's an interesting world. I mean, may maybe you can speak on it where it feels like someone is using mental health as, like, a, like a buffer. Like, they, they go, like, I can do crazy things, and then if someone calls me out, I'd be like, oh, no, 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 I'm, I've got mental health, so you can't say anything about that. Yeah, I mean, I mean this in the most brotherly, uh, you know, black man to black man way possible. Kanye West is full of shit, right? And... <laughs> and... And, and, and what I mean by that is exactly what you just said. You sat in the White House with Donald Trump and you said you didn't have bipolar. You right. were misdiagnosed. It was sleep deprivation. You're off your medication. You create better without it. But when you get into a rap feud with Drake, the only way you can combat Drake in any way, shape, or form is to weaponize mental health and say that Drake bullies people with mental health issues right. based off, you know, a couple bars that Drake give, gave Kid Cudi who suffers from mental health and now Drake, you know, coming at Kanye West. But to me, man, it has nothing to do with mental health. This is about sneakers. It's the fact that Drake is affecting your sneaker sales. Because, <laughs> no, because in the biggest song of the year... <laughs> and, in the biggest song of the year, which is Sicko Mode, right. you know, with Drake and Travis Scott, Drake says, uh, checks over stripes. Right. And then in another record with French Montana called No Style, he said, don't wear no 350s around me, which is uh, one of Kanye West's sneakers. Right. Kanye West's last couple of sneakers haven't really sold extremely well. Now, I can't chalk that all up to Drake. I'm gonna chalk that up to some of the MAGA hat, too. But <laughs> the, the only way you can think to combat Drake is to weaponize mental health issues. That's whack, my brother. What That's would, lame. What would you hope that, that, that you could change in somebody's mind when they, when they read the book? I mean, because here's what's interesting about this book, is that I like that you haven't tried to present yourself as an expert. I'm not you, an expert at anything. Right, you, 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 you write... No, but you write about your experiences, and then you have a therapist who actually, like, basically has an addendum after each chapter... Dr. ...that Ish. breaks it down, mm -hmm. like a real medical professional. So what would you hope that somebody takes away from reading this book, especially people who see mental health as like, ah, man, you crazy. Like, what, what, would you, what would you hope that they take away? I would hope that they take away the fact that it's okay to get help. It's okay to not be okay. I look at mental health the same way I look at physical health. You know, like, if, if you get a little chubby around the middle, which we all do during the winter, you're going to go work it out, you're going right. to go eat right. right. I think it's the same thing with your brain. You know what I'm saying? Like, you have to watch what you put into your brain. You have therapists and psychiatrists that you can sit down and talk to and figure things out and work through these issues. So it's just okay to, to, to not be okay. And it's okay to say you're not okay. And if right. people think you're crazy, so what? You know what I'm saying? You know what's crazy? Not going to get help for it. Thank you so much for being on the show, my dude. Yeah. Great having you back. Shook one. Really different and interesting look at Charlemagne the God is available now.